So for today's video, it's a little out of the ordinary. I wanted to take a look at some of the interesting and meaningful chat style interactions that DSP has had recently. Because he's always going on about how him being an interactive streamer is the turning point for his career. How his content is so much better now that he actually interacts with the chat every single day. And then that is the reason why people like him so much. Just wanted to clarify that before we get started and people are confused as to what the actual subject of the video is, because it might not seem cohesive. Right? <clears throat> Oh, let's see here. I received a $3 tip. Anonymous tipper. How many hours a week would you say you work, ex including uploading and everything? Do you ever get exhausted? Oh, yeah. And you can tell right away that DSP absolutely loves that this person asked this question because he's constantly trying to make it sound like he does so much work that he's some blue collar content creator who spends all of his time in his office and never has any time to do anything else. So this was absolutely a bait tip, whether from a troll or from a genuine fan who's trying to help his case. And you can hear the excitement in his voice. He absolutely wants to answer this and he wants to give you as much detail as he reasonably can. Oh, uh, I mean, in any given day, all right, you know, I'm working before I'm on stream because I'm researching, you know, things for stories. I'm approving and, and, and looking through comments. I'm reading emails. So I'm probably doing work at least an hour before I ever even set foot on a stream. So let me translate that from pig roach to English for all of you, because he's really trying to slip something past you here. When he says that he's looking things up for stories, you know, for DSPN, what that actually means is he's scrolling through Twitter. He's really trying to sit here and justify that scrolling through Twitter is work that he's doing for his business and is super taxing and meaningful. When he says that he's going through comments, he's also implying that that's some sort of effort on his behalf. Let me tell you, I go through my comments all of the time. I don't have to approve any of them because that's not something we do over here but it's actually one of my favorite things to do i do it in my off time because it's fun and you guys are funny as hell so i appreciate all of your meaningful style comments thank you and the last thing he does before he's ever stepping foot on stream you know when he's working really hard behind the scenes is checking emails i have to ask dsp what emails are you checking because it's not like you have sponsors that you're dealing with you're not brokering any deals you're not getting any sort of affiliate link on any website or negotiating getting a cut from a product that you're going to talk about the only emails that you could even be referring to are emails that say that you got a tip on PayPal, which I don't really think that you can consider work, or a bunch of emails asking to be unbanned by either LARPers or Canadian Kirk. So are we really going to sit here and act like reading emails is some sort of labor-intensive activity that must be done before we start the stream? Especially as of late, given how often recently that he's been on the pre-stream completely dead silent while he checks his emails. And I apologize if it seems like I'm harping on this for a little too long, but I really do dislike when people pretend that they work hard. Not that I would really consider content creation work, at least not the way that DSP does it. But he's really out here trying to convince you that he's grinding himself to dust to continue to stream the exact way that he's been streaming. When anybody who's not suffering from complete brain rot can tell you very quickly that DSP streams are subpar at best. But I'll let him continue. DSP, what does the rest of your day look like? <clears throat> then I'm streaming every day. Stream goes on around 10.45 a.m. Runs till roughly 4 p.m. Obviously, no mention of the fact that he spends the first 30 minutes of the stream actually not doing anything and running those slides and playing music that nobody wants to hear. You would love to make you think that he's actually streaming from 1045 to 4 p.m., which I guess technically he is because the stream is up and running, but he's not actually making any sort of content during the first 30, sometimes even the first 45. Then after that, I'm uploading, I'm setting up streams for the night. Uh, doing all that so i'm in here at least another half an hour after my stream goes off let off the air and the only reason he has to do that is because he's decided that that's how he's going to cut his videos into parts like that instead of uploading the raw vods like every other streamer does on the platform pretty much a self-made problem simply so that he can act like he works hard continue um and then i'm in here again probably around 6 30 ish that night <clears throat> setting up that late stream, getting that set up. You hear how he tried to make it sound like he was doing more by repeating the exact same thing? I'm gonna run it back because I really can't believe it. Um, and then I'm in here again, probably around 6.30ish that night. <clears throat> 
setting up that late stream getting that set up. Yes, yeah, so he's setting up the stream and then he's got to get that set up. Actually just repeating the exact same thing so that it sounds like he's busy. Oh yeah, you guys, I'm super busy. I had to mop the floor and then I had to clean the floor. People who are actually busy don't have to make up things that they do. They could just tell you the things without repeating themselves because there is a list of things. Also, I don't know how many of you are actually familiar with how much setup there really goes into a stream because on the YouTube end, it's really not all that complicated. You just give it a name, you give it a description and then you give it a thumbnail. It can absolutely get more complicated when it comes to OBS. If you have a lot of sources, if you change scenes very often, but that's not the case for DSP. He does the same thing day in, day out. All he has to do is change the main source in his OBS to whichever console he's using to show off that game that he's currently playing. Oh, but Atlas, you're forgetting all of the things that he pops up during his segments like Phil's Day Off and DSPN. Yeah, that's as simple as just clicking the hide and unhide icon on the sources tab. Those should never go away. He should never have to do anything with them and it's one mouse click obviously very taxing on the body he works very hard after my late stream goes offline i got a ton of work to do i got to set up the next streams for the next day i got to do the daily schedule ending depending on what's going on the next day some days i got to set up playlists for the next day if it's the react show i got to upload videos overnight for my video editors to work on for the throwback channel you know shout out the editors i guess it's obviously a lot of work for dsp to upload those raw videos off of his hard drive so that they can actually work on it and he can make money off of it and him even mentioning the fact that he has to set up playlists for DSP reacts is a complete waste of time because he can do that on his phone in the living room and it wouldn't be any different. So in any given day, let's just add that up. If you're talking on stream, <clears throat> the first stream would be about five and a half hours. The late stream would be about three hours. So right there, that's about eight and a half hours just on stream. But if you add the work that I'm doing around the stream, that's probably another two to three hours of work. So probably in a given day, it's probably around 10 to 11 hours of work in one day, um, roughly. And it could vary. Some days there's way less. Some days there's a lot more. It depends on what's going on. Um, and that's six days a week. So on average in a week, I probably work 60 to 70 hours, roughly, depending on what's going on. Um, and I find this absolutely despicable in every sense of the word. To actually try and convince all of these people that DSP is working 60 to 70 hours in a week is absolutely insane. Not only is it barely considered work, I wouldn't even call it that, but the amount of wasted time and dumb bullshit that he is even considering work to begin with is astronomical. I really just thought that he was going to defend that if the stream is on, technically he's working, so he works eight hours a day, sometimes nine if he does overtime, so he works, you know, 40 plus plus hours a week, sometimes 50. But this absolute buffoon is really trying to sit here and justify saying that he works 60 to 70 hours a week because sometimes he plays on his phone and has to scroll through Twitter. I would absolutely love to see this guy do any sort of actual labor in his entire life, even for just a normal 40 hour work week. I genuinely thought that doing this segment was going to be funny and I was going to have fun with it, but I just found myself annoyed that this guy really thinks that he is out here working hard, that he's a real laborer just like everybody else. The warped reality that he has to live in is absolutely absolutely insane and uh you know do i ever get exhausted absolutely there's days when i'm beat and i just want to get out of here and go plop on the couch and and sit there with my wife and relax and watch something and i can't i gotta be in here another hour doing shit after the stream's over i'm like dude i just want to get out the fuck out of here and i can't you know that's life though it's work oh god dsp it must be so taxing on your mental health that you have to sit in that chair instead of the chair downstairs in the living room but that's life it's work you know and it's really irritating that he acts as though he can't watch something or listen to something or enjoy some piece of media while he does all of this uploading and stream prep because that's exactly what i do when i'm editing the videos when i'm doing the thumbnails when i'm doing whatever stream prep is actually required i'm listening to music i'm watching a youtube video because those are still things that you can do while you're being productive i don't know why he's sitting here and acting is though once he's in that room there's no sort of enjoyment that can be going on if he really wants to spend time with his wife so bad why doesn't she just come in the room and hang out with him while he does all of these things they can have a conversation for once of course implying that she actually wants to talk to him and spend time with him which we all know is not the case is it a fun job absolutely it is but it is a job and i treat it seriously like a job and a lot of people don't a lot of people say, oh, streaming's a joke or whatever. Maybe that's because other streamers aren't as serious as I am or don't treat it like it, like a professional thing. I do. But that's why I have a set schedule. That's why I'm here on time every day. People, you know, making jokes about that. You're a fucking idiot. I treat it like a job because it is my job and I take it seriously. And that's why I'm still here after 15 plus years of doing it. And other people have, you know, blown out of like a fart out of your ass into the wind and they're not here anymore, you know? 
So thank you for the three dollar tip. No, oh, DSP, the only reason that you're still here is because you beg everybody for money every single day and you have no job prospects outside of this. There is quite literally nothing else that you could possibly do to make money. This is it for you, as sad as that is. And the seriousness that he brings to his stream is absolutely a detriment to his streams. That's the reason that nobody is having any fun and his support is as low as it is. Because nothing screams fun and entertainment like a streamer treating it as though it's his job. <laughs> Okay, let's see what they have to say. Could we ever see a segment where you take questions about a member's life issues or an opinionated question and then you respond? Make it a high tier members feature. That way trolls can't infiltrate it. Yes, they can. The memberships actually are very easy to get on the cheap, so that doesn't even work what you're suggesting. What do you mean, DSP? I thought that the higher tier memberships were the solution to the Argentinian style problem over on DSP Reacts. Isn't that what you told us? Isn't that why you increased the membership price and created an entirely new tier that everybody had to go and subscribe to in order to get their videos watched? Are you then implying that you just artificially increased the price of the suggestion simply because and it didn't actually solve the problem? Also, I see it in the chat, so I guess I'm gonna give it a shout out. Shout out this uh, absolute LARPer called Tummy Time Timmy, you're not clever, who says, yeah, I never heard of this Ivega guy either. So I guess shout out our boy Ivega. That guy probably goes to sleep, unlike Ivega. Make a community post each week. Let those members post their issue or question. Maybe a more long form react with fans than just chat questions. Hashtag DSP listens. Okay. Um. No. So here's the deal. Okay. Number one. Member, these member ideas will never work. We already know that now YouTube is completely broken when it comes to memberships. People can easily spoof an IP address, pretend like they're somewhere else in the world, and buy a membership for pennies on the dollar. You can literally buy like a highest tier membership for less than a dollar, okay? So the, sadly, the suggestion doesn't work just on those grounds. And that sucks, I know, because I liked doing stuff with memberships, and now basically they're completely worthless thanks to YouTube being busted and being stupid. Okay. And there's our confirmation. So the increase over on the memberships at DSP Reacts was entirely a scam and didn't actually solve the problem. So I guess big ups to DSP for scamming his viewers once again. But that being said, shout out obviously. Um the idea of me taking serious questions and things like that and taking dedicated time um to actually talk about it. Here's the thing. I, I I'm going to be honest with you here. I never once in my entire time being on YouTube or on the internet in general, I never said that I am someone who is like wise or smart, that I'm someone who knows better than anyone else. I don't think I've ever presented myself to you guys as like a guru or someone to go to for big life advice. Like, when did that ever happen? Well, I'm honestly glad that you never advertised yourself as someone who was wise or smart because that would just be false advertising. And nobody can appreciate false advertising. But you don't have to advertise yourself as somebody who is wise and can give advice to just give somebody advice. Good quality advice can actually come from the people that you least expect to be able to give it. Advice isn't something that only a select amount of people are allowed to do on the entire planet. You have to meet some sort of prerequisite in order to do it or anything. I don't think it's a good idea that you you give out advice given you are the way that you are, but your reasoning for why you can't do it isn't exactly the right reason. And you're constantly talking about things that you don't understand, so what difference would it make if you aren't wise and can actually give good advice? It wouldn't be any different from your normal content. You don't understand a single thing about video games or how they're made or any of the mechanics behind them, but you constantly talk on them like you're some sort of authority. So continuing to speak on something that you know nothing about is right up your alley and just on brand for you. I'm just a normal guy, enjoying life, playing games, hanging out, having a good time with my audience, and that's all that matters, right? Listen, every once in a while, perhaps, I could give you some advice on something I know about, whether it's games or whatever. You know, sometimes I'll interject a little bit of my own personal experience or stuff like that. I don't know why people would even want to ask me these questions. I'm not, I'm not an authority figure, nor did I ever present myself in that way. Again, you don't have to be some sort of authority figure, though. Given that DSP has been on this planet for what is almost 42 years consecutively, he should have lived enough life to be able to give some sort of advice to somebody who has less experience on the planet than him. I want to reiterate that I don't think it's a good idea that anybody actually take advice from DSP, but his reasoning on why he can't give advice just doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Because everybody's lived experience is completely different, and they have a different perspective on everything. So being able to talk about that and explain the conclusion 
conclusion that you came to afterwards isn't of itself advice and maybe somebody would want to hear that. Even if they walk away with the complete opposite conclusion that you came to given the information that they're given from your story. Like for example, there's many content creators and YouTubers out there that present themselves in a way that they act like they're some kind of a authority figure. Okay? Meaning, oh, I'm an expert on left-wing politics. I'm an expert on this philosophical kind of thinking. I'm an expert on the history of this certain line of something, games or TV, or I'm a guru, you know, I'm an encyclopedic knowledge about movies and stuff like that. People present themselves in that way, correct? For sure. I don't. When have I ever said, come to me because I am a wealth of knowledge on this, this subject matter? Never, right? Not once. If you want to ask me questions about like Super Turbo or something, I guess, or about the history of being a, a, a YouTuber for 15 years, that I can tell you, that's about it. For once, I'm glad that I actually let him cook there because he said exactly what I was going to say for me, very robust. He also said something in a very roundabout way that I was going to say, in that he doesn't present himself in this way, he doesn't say these things, so he's just supposed to be your everyday average style person. And sometimes that's the exact person that you want to get information from, that you would like to receive advice from. Because regardless of whether someone is a wealth of knowledge or not, Sometimes you just want the average perspective. You want to know what a normie thinks like. Isn't that essentially just what market research is? Is finding out what the normies think and enjoy? That's like an entire billion dollar industry or something like that. Right? Like, I give you my opinions on stuff, but this is not anything to, to live your life by. And if I had an entire premise of a show or something like that based on, hey, ask Phil questions and he's going to give you advice, I think that's a terrible idea. Because... Basically, when you do that, you put yourself kind of in the line of fire, do you not? Like, what's to say that someone asks me a serious question about, let's say, for example, a relationship. Let's say someone's in a relationship and they're, they're, they're in a bond. And they ask me a question. And I answer, honestly, I think you should do this. Maybe this will work. And then they do it, and then it, it blows up, and the relationship ends. And they're like, ah, oh, it's, it's your fault. You gave me bad advice, Phil. Like, well, wait, wait. But I didn't, I never wanted to present myself as a guru to tell you what to do. I don't know any better than anybody else, you know? Well, anybody that's going to go to some streamer for advice and then take them at their word and then blame them for the outcome is absolutely regarded by themselves. It has nothing to do with the person that's giving them the advice. But part of giving advice like that is to talk somebody through something and explain your rationale from an outside perspective and your lived experience. And sometimes that in and of itself can help that person come to a conclusion that is going to be beneficial for them even if it's not directly the advice that you gave them. But I really shouldn't be surprised that this isn't something that DSP understands given the fact that he doesn't care about anybody else's perspective other than his. The situation that he's describing is the mentality that he brings to every single situation, where anything that anybody tells him is exactly what he does and when it doesn't work out, he blames them instead of himself. Because taking responsibility is hard and we really don't want to do that over here at DSP Space Gaming. So that's what I mean. Like If that was the kind of content creator I was, if I was presenting myself in a situation where it's like, oh yeah, I'm a life coach. I'm a, you know, I'm a guru of this or that. I'm not at all, nor did I ever aspire to be or present myself as such. If you're here to have a good time, great. But outside of that, you know, you know, <laughs> beware at your own risk of trying to take any action in your own life based on something you hear in my content. I, I don't know what else to say. Like, that's your personal choice. If I start doing a whole series about that, now I'm putting myself in the line of fire because I actively chose to do that, right? That would be my fault. So, no, I do not think that I will be doing that, but thank you for the tip. So obviously I was right once again. The answer was, uh, no. Ah! We, we got the first tip of the day. It's a $15 tip from BB Phil. Wow, BB Phil's all over the place. BB Phil with super chats and BB Phil with a tip. Thank you, BB Phil, for the first tip of the day. BB Phil, please seek help immediately. This is unhealthy and unnecessary. You're embarrassing yourself and your family. And look at this position that he finds himself in every time he has to update the leaderboards, just neck cranked all the way around. This is a guy who very frequently is talking about how he has shoulder numbness, his neck hurts, and he's got back problems. I can't imagine this is doing you any favors there though, boss. What an unnatural way for him to have his room set up. And he's the only person that's in control of what goes where in the room. This is entirely his fault. This room's sole purpose is 
is for him to do his streams in, and this is how he has configured it. There's really no justifiable reason why he would have his setup so inconvenient for himself. I couldn't find the dollar sign. <laughs> I don't know where the hell it was. Uh, I, I missed it like seven times in a row. Okay, so BB Phil says the following. What did he say, Phil? I'm not getting any younger here. Final attempt to salvage Phil's feast for Europeans. While I'm really looking forward to it, I understand we can't buy the exact same meal for the same chef. Can you announce at 1 p.m. what you're having? From a local place you're getting, are you going to get some kimchi or bibimbap or whatever else? I live in a big city. I could at least attempt to match the dish. Even though Baba Bimbop would be very different, I still feel more like we're having a meal together. While still ordering at 4 p.m. on your end, you'll have to announce the order at 1. I know I joked about BB Phil needing help, but this is the second or even third time that he's sent a super chat or a tip, whichever one it is, it doesn't matter, they're kind of all the same, about what food DSP is going to be having during his stupid birthday event. Why is he so obsessed with what food DSP is going to be eating and trying to match it? It seems like such a strange thing to actually care about. I swear, all the genuine DSP fans are completely unhinged. But at least we got two shoutouts to Babimbop. I'm sure Danny is eating absolutely absolutely fantastically right now. He loves Babimbop. I don't even know. Here's the thing. My wife and I probably won't even know what we're doing till the night before. Just being honest. Like, we'll probably look at food the week and then decide the night before. Uh, we'll probably end up, like, ordering the night before because you can order ahead of time. So that way, uh, it's already set up and we don't have to, like, rush to do it or whatever. Um, well, I have no idea what we're doing right now. Uh, maybe I could tell you during that stream. We'll see. Why is it so difficult for him to just choose a place that he's going to eat so we can answer these people's questions and inform them on what's going to be on the stream during his birthday? He's picking the food. It's his birthday. He can eat anywhere he wants. Just make a decision. How are you not going to know till the day prior? You can't even be bothered to think about what food you are going to be eating during the weekend? But I don't know. Sometimes I just like to have it be a mystery because then it's the element of surprise when I do it and people are more interested, right? Like, what if I announced... Uh, I'm getting a big sandwich. And people will be like, eh, sandwiches aren't that interesting. And then people won't tune in. But I don't say what it is. And more people say, ooh, I wonder what Phil ordered for food. And he'll show up to see what it is during that segment, right? So, and by the way, I'm not saying I'm getting a sandwich. We're probably not getting a sandwich. It'd probably be something else from a, a, a restaurant that, you know, more fancy or something. We'll have to see. But anyway, do you see my point? Uh, if, if I know ahead of time and I feel like telling you I will... But I don't know. Right now, I have no clue what I'm going to do. Okay? <clears throat> okay, DSP. Sounds good to me. Totally reasonable to not have a plan for what you're going to do on your event that you told everybody to show up for and are constantly hyping up every single day. Okay. So thank you, BB Phil, for the first tip of the day. I really appreciate that. Um, See, Don Fanucci says, do some authentic Italian. Get some eggplant, parmesan, and calamari. You know I wish. I seriously wish. There just aren't many real Italian restaurants out here. And what I mean by that is, I'm serious about this now. The most popular Italian restaurant out here in this area of the country is Olive Garden. That's terrible. Okay, DSP, a lot of people don't care whether or not the Italian food is super authentic or not. I'd wager to say that Olive Garden, being that it's a chain, is a very popular Italian restaurant in just about all 50 states if they got them. Maybe not all 50 because, you know, Hawaii and Alaska don't have a lot of things that the other states have because they're so far away. But I'm not at all surprised that he has a problem with people enjoying Olive Garden because he's always been up his own ass about how good Italian food is on the East Coast and how he's totally Italian, you guys. Just ignore the fact that he's majority Polish. Olive Garden is awful. It is so fake. It is totally not real Italian food in any way, shape, or form. It's basically a bastardization, an American knockoff. It's absolutely fucking terrible. You know, things can be bastardizations. They can be off-brand and generic all they want and still taste good. All of those things are not synonymous with poor taste. I'm not the biggest fan of Olive Garden myself. I'm not going to sit here and stand for it. But when DSP takes these hard stances about general things that people in real life just tend to enjoy, it really irks me and really emphasizes how not normal DSP is. How full of hate and vitriol he really just is in general. There really is no reason to take such a hardline stance on Olive Garden. What you wind up doing is just alienating a section of your audience that might enjoy Olive Garden even in the slightest. But he feels inclined to take this stance, as though his Italian heritage is dependent on whether or not he talks about Olive Garden in a good or bad way. Okay, uh, I hate it. I've had it like three times in my life, and every time I've said, maybe they've changed and improved, and every time I go to get it, and I'm like, what the fuck did I do to myself? Right? 
It's the same as going to like Red Lobster and expecting you're going to get authentic, awesome quality Italian food. Because if you don't know, Red Lobster and Olive Garden are exactly the same company. They just brand their food differently, but it's the same exact company. That's why all the food sucks. I don't know if it was a misspeak or he knows something that I don't know, but he said that you would go to Red Lobster and expect authentic Italian food as well. I've never been to a Red Lobster and expected Italian food. I typically expect to eat seafood and that is what they give you. They give you seafood. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so there are a few Italian restaurants out here that aren't bad, but they're just too far away. Like, they're way far away. One of them is, like, 45 minutes away. One of them, again, is, like, 40 minutes away. So none of the delivery places will will get food from them. They don't, they're all considered out of range. So we can never get Italian food. Like, we never do. We haven't had Italian food in years. I think, I think since Kat moved in with me in 2018... We've maybe had Italian food a grand total of four times. 45 minutes is definitely quite a long time to drive exclusively to get a certain style of food. But you could very easily remedy that situation by just having things to do that are out that direction and just stopping by on the way back or to the destination that you are going to anyway. But that would actually require you to leave your house or go do anything with your mom wife. And heaven forbid DSP actually leave that dilapidated little snort fort that he calls home. Nah. I'm not counting pizza, by the way. I'm just saying real sit-down Italian restaurant food. We've only been at, like, maybe four times. So. Excuse me. Whew. You could make it? I mean, yeah, of course I could make Italian food. I could make my own sauce and we could have pasta, but what's the point? The point was that we're ordering food for my birthday. Now I'm making food on my birthday. I love that someone says that you could make Italian food and he says, yes, I can make Italian food. I can make a sauce and we can have pasta. That's it. That's all of the Italian food that DSP actually knows how to make is sauce and pasta. And I highly doubt that he actually knows how to make pasta. He's just going to be eating the pasta that comes out of the box, just like everybody else. Super authentic Italian style dish made by the king of hate himself. Also got to appreciate that he acts as though it's absurd that he might make his own birthday meal he absolutely has to order out you guys even though making the sauce and doing a pasta dish on his birthday stream would actually be meaningful and robust content for the stream beings that it's a part of his 15 year legacy and something that he prides himself in or at least used to pride himself in now nah, we have to DoorDash. i don't have a favorite pasta i think that pastas are good in different situations like if i'm at a restaurant and i'm ordering a main dish like a chicken parm and they offer me a side of pasta I prefer like a side of spaghetti or a side of linguine with just a basic marinara. If you were asking me, well, what about a dish that has like other stuff in it, like meat and stuff, then I probably prefer like a short noodle pasta because that way I don't have to be slurping it up with stuff going all over the place with other ingredients and make it a big mess, you know, like maybe a, a rigatoni or penne or something like that. But I also like other pastas that are like stuff like I like, I like, um, uh, not ravioli. What's uh, what's the little one? Tortellini. I like tortellinis. I think tortellinis are great. You know, and you can have meat in those. You can have cheese in those. There's all kinds of different pastas that are amazing. So I really don't have a particular favorite. I think that they're all good in different things. I swear to God, DSP could find a way to fence sit any and all subjects thrown his way. It doesn't matter how much experience he has with it. It doesn't matter how many options he's given. He will fence sit it till the day he dies. But what you will notice in this example, and typically when it does come to these food discussions, is that he will give you far more detail about food than he will with any other topic. DSP, what's your favorite game? I don't have a favorite game. They're all different, dude. But when it comes to food or pasta in this instance, oh guys, I love pastas in all sorts of fashions. And these scenarios with these ingredients for this reason or that? Where's that passion when it comes to video games, DSP? You know, that thing that you claim is your main passion and the reason that you do this as a job? Because it's not only your job, but also your hobby. It's always just so strange to me how passionate he seems to be about food, but then he's decided that playing video games was his calling in life. Also, his fence-sitting ass answer goes directly against the lore that penne is his favorite pasta, which he did in fact say in the past. That's why penne points existed and penne was a huge meme in the DSP style community for a very long time time i guess we're just gonna retcon history so that we can fence it some more very cool do i like risotto you know i've only had risotto a few times um and usually it was like as a side or something so i don't think that i've ever had like a major oh i just ate a risotto for dinner so i don't really know but i'd have to get a good risotto from someone that knows what they're doing i think to make a comment on it
Squid Ink Risotto. That sounds interesting. I wonder if it tastes very different, if it's just the coloring because it had the squid ink in it, or if it legit tastes like a flavor because the ink tastes like something. I, I don't know. Yeah, the classic DSP beam, I prefer a penne. I, it could, because it's easy to eat. I don't even remember saying it, but I must have said it at some point and someone made a, a meme out of it, right? I don't remember actually saying it though. This dude is such a clown. He made an entire point system over on Twitch around the penne meme and he doesn't even remember saying it. He never saw the clip. How were you so unaware of the things that people talk about in your community? How were you so unaware about the content that you put on the internet? He wonders why his community is as shitty as it is and why they don't have their own memes and why they don't have fun in his chat. It's because he doesn't even know when they're referencing things. It's because he doesn't know how to capitalize on things that people genuinely enjoy out of his content because he doesn't even know what his content is this guy just genuinely does not give a single shit about his content it is awful he's so useless and dumb hmm. i should get back to the east coast why would i want to do that exactly when i lived on the east coast all right the weather was atrociously bad the prices were sky high the taxes were sky high it was overpopulated overcrowded the only benefit was like the food and of course, my, my parents being there, but that's it. Like there was nothing else of value there. And notice that he brought up good tasting food before he even bothered to mention the fact that uh, his parents live there. You know, the people who raised him and his only living family members that he even talks about or acknowledges. Yeah, screw those people, dude. I want to talk about authentic Italian style cuisines. What a horrible son. I can only imagine how embarrassed his father Dave actually is of him. Rightfully so, I would say. He raised just an awful human being. Also, that person said that he should go back to the East Coast. He could absolutely find somewhere on the East Coast that isn't overcrowded, overpopulated, sky high taxes or whatever all that shit he said was. But of course, DSP is not interested in honestly answering the question. He just has to vehemently defend him living in his gated community in Washington. As if this is some sort of outright attack on his current lifestyle instead of just a suggestion that they think would be interesting. Okay, there was one other thing. I miss diner food. And I miss small independent restaurants doing good food, like American style. Like, I liked going to Duchess. I liked going to Tomlinson's. I liked going to diners in the area and sitting down and just getting a fresh plate of food. They don't have that kind of stuff out here. Because out here, it's all Asian culture. Because when Asians come to the United States, they go to this airport over here, SeaTac. And a lot of them just settled here when they came to the States. So all the restaurants around here are primarily of from, from the Asia. So you've got... <clears throat> all kinds of, you know, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, Vietnamese, uh, Hawaiian, Indian, and then even some Mediterranean. There's like some Mediterranean restaurants, but it's like, where's the Italian restaurant? They don't exist. Where's the, the American style fare? Like an actual American style diner that doesn't exist. That's not out here. Sounds to me like DSP is saying that there's too many Asians in the area. I would never say that. I would never condone that behavior. But that's what it sounds like he's saying because he can't find that American style diner that he's looking for, dude. But hasn't he said before that there is a diner that he actually enjoys going to in the area and that he's like a regular there or something? Him and Kat go all the time. It's one of their favorite places to go. I even remember a story where they tried to go there and it was super packed and maybe they had to go to like Burger King or something. Maybe I'm misremembering. Who knows? So... That's that's what it's like. It's like very cultural stuff, which is good. It's good to have that cultural flair and variety. But then when you just want to go back, it's like, all right, I just want something more basic American. Oh, it's not here. Like, oh shit. Well, that sucks. <laughs> all right, what what are you gonna do? Um. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's what that's what I miss. So I would say that f I, I miss true Italian food. I miss American fair food, and I miss my parents. That's what I miss about the East Coast. Outside of that, there's no reason for me to go back to the East Coast at all, at all. Please notice again that we listed several types of food before we listed that we miss our parents. Disgusting. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. I received a $2.22 tip from a huge throbbing penne. He says, have you had any interest in watching the Emperor romance scene in Baldur's Gate 3? Uh, no. Absolutely not. I think that was one specifically for Japanese people who prefer the tentacle, uh... The tentacle persuasion, I think they call it. Uh, but I have no interest in seeing that. Thanks.
I have no interest in seeing that either, DSP. But I guess shout out to all of the Japanese style individuals who are of the tentacle persuasion, I guess. And speaking of people who are into the tentacle persuasion, I guess we're going to take a look at the comments from my last video. Shout out the 60 skulls. Sorry to put you in that camp, you guys. It was just the only segue I could come up with. Jules Necro says, as soon as he smiles into the camera, I get agitated because I know we get either a snake laugh or absolute buffoonery. Mostly both. And that's really where the problems start, isn't it? With that smile. Pewop says, when he says chill or relaxing, substitute in drunk and it makes way more sense. He's just looking for something easy to do while streaming and drinking to relax and take the edge off. Well, as we heard at the beginning of the video, the guy very clearly works hard if he's working 60 to 70 hours a week. So I guess he deserves to have some downtime and chill and take the edge off. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, Cat agrees. And last but not least, Broside Phil says exactly this. Phil hasn't changed. He's the same angry racist sexist, etc. He always was, but he's learned to hide it so he doesn't feel the blowback as hard. But his actions scream louder than any words he could ever say. Well, I'm glad that we're all in agreement on this. And if anybody disagrees with this conclusion, feel free to tell me why. If you genuinely think that DSP isn't the same person he was yesterday, let me know. Shout out to everybody who watched the video, especially if you made it this far. Hopefully I can catch all of you guys in the next video, but until then, make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper into that. Snortex. Ah!